We join our hearts in praying together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Exodus, the 24th chapter. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the leaders, elders of Israel went up and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet as if it were a pavement of sapphire stone like the very heaven for clean, clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone, with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord.
We will now read responsively Psalm 2, verses 6 through 12. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. And the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with an rod of iron. And dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with your life. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. And you and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Here ends our psalm reading. The second lesson is from the second chap the second Peter, the first chapter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the dark dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Children's message. Come on up. You're the winner. First place. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Nice sweater. Yeah, very nice sweater. How's everybody doing this morning? Doing good? Hey, do you know any famous people? I do. You know somebody famous? Yeah. Who is it? Me. <laughs> is he famous? No. Yes, I am. No? Do you know, so you don't really know any famous people? No? Celebrities or American idols, anybody like that? Nope. Well, actually, I do know somebody famous. Yeah, me. <laughs> no, not you. Well, I do know you, but you're not famous. Says you. Well, actually, the person who's famous that I know um, was executed as a criminal. <gasps> Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know Jeffrey Dahmer, sorry. Uh, the person that I know that's famous was executed. He was killed as being a criminal. You know who it was? Exactly right, it was Jesus. Was he a criminal? Well, he wasn't actually, but they executed him as a criminal. The Romans thought that he was trying to take over as king, and the Jewish people didn't like him because he was saying that he was the son of God. So they killed him. So how do you know him? Well, kind of three different ways, actually. Yep, the Bible is the first way I got to know him. The second way I got to know him is right up here in communion, in the Lord's Supper, huh? and in baptism. And the way I got to know him was because he came to me. Really? Yep. He came to me and he said, I want to, you to know the Father in heaven. And the way to get to the Father in heaven is through me. That's what Jesus says to you all too. 
He comes to you in your baptism, and he's going to come to you in the Lord's Supper, and he comes to you in the Bible, and he says, I want you to know God the Father, so come with me. So we get to know someone famous. Yep, we get not only to know somebody famous, he comes to live in us, and he'll make us famous. Maybe not on earth, but he'll make us famous in heaven. Sound pretty cool? Why? Yeah. Because he loves us. Yes, he does. He really does love us. Yep. I'll tell you what. Let's say a prayer and thank God for loving us so much, okay? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, for sending him to us so we can come to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Now I know a whole bunch of famous people. We stand for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days after he first told the disciples he would be killed in Jerusalem, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus is Christ. Amen. Well, for the first nine years of my ministry, I lived in the tiny little village of Winter, Wisconsin, population 343. Salute! <laughs> yes, somebody else has watched Hee Haw. <laughs> Well, while I was there, I learned that tiny little winter Wisconsin was the hometown of a man named Jeff Williams. Well, who's Jeff Williams? Well, Jeff had joined the Air Force after leaving winter and had his sights set pretty high. Although I'm not sure even he knew at first just how high. Jeff ended up taking several trips into space as a NASA astronaut and has also spent a considerable amount of time on the International Space Station. Well, Jeff was back in town to visit his parents at one time and he made a visit to the local school clad in his white jumpsuit with the NASA logo on the left chest. And the young students were clearly thrilled to see a real astronaut, but I think no more excited than many of the adults were. I mean, the line of people to shake his hand, share a word or two with him, get a picture taken with him was very long. I suppose then, you know, they could show those pictures to their friends and family later on and say, See, look, I know a, a real astronaut. As though somehow a bit of his celebrity or maybe his fame or even his talents might rub off in the encounter. You know, we are very curious creatures when it comes to fame. And I know this because I would be only too happy to sit and tell you about my brief conversations with NBA star Isaiah Thomas or NFL great Bubba Smith, or that my cousin Michael Franti is a world-known musician. 
but that's not really the point. I can certainly tell you that none of their talent or skill has rubbed off on me. Well, way back in first century Palestine, they didn't have astronauts or basketball or football stars. They didn't have American idols, but they most certainly did have celebrities. Human nature is such that it creates celebrities and it craves them. And if it doesn't have any, it will work very hard and it will manage one way or another to create a celebrity. Back then, just like now, some celebrities were no longer alive. And two of the biggest ones were Moses, of course, who had gone up on the mountain and spoken with God, and Elijah, probably the greatest prophet in the memory of the people of Israel. Now, of course, Jesus' own fame had spread like wildfire the minute his ministry began. I mean, can you imagine the swarms of people that would descend on Clintonville if somebody here suddenly started healing people with just a touch or a word. I mean, you wouldn't be able to move. The grocery stores would be emptied of food. There would be so many. And of course, the fact that the people of Israel hadn't had a big name prophet or celebrity for quite a few years made Jesus' celebrity all the bigger. All they had seen were some rather small-time rebels rather uns unsuccessfully try to overthrow the Roman rule. So when Jesus showed up and started performing these signs, they latched on. Now imagine being Peter or James or John. To begin with, this huge celebrity, this teacher, this rabbi, this miracle worker had handpicked you to be in his inner circle. What do they call it today? To be a member of his posse? I mean, he has hand-selected you to be in his inner circle. And in fact, some of his fame and celebrity, well, more accurately, his authority and his power had rubbed off on those in his inner circle. He sent them out, and they were given power to heal and to cast out demons. But now Jesus says, you three, Come with me. And he takes them up a mountain. Believe me, this is no small thing going up a mountain. Remember Moses? He went up on the mountain, was there 40 days and 40 nights in the cloud that had the appearance of fire. I mean, speaking with God. The fact that this huge celebrity, this miracle worker, was taking them up a mountain was not lost on them. They knew this was significant. So up the mountain you go, and all of a sudden, the spotlights come on. Except they're not shining on Jesus, they're shining from him. And if that's not enough, there are celebrities number one and two, the biggest names in your entire nation, standing there talking with Jesus. Remember, you're in his inner circle now, so you're going to rub shoulders with Moses and Elijah. It's no wonder at all Peter wanted to start a building program. <laughs> I want to stay right here, he said. I mean, imagine, they could charge a denarius per person to see Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, the three biggest celebrities in the nation, and it wouldn't take maybe a month for them to retire. Besides that, think of the fame and celebrity they themselves would have. No more nights on the Sea of Galilee, endlessly throwing and hauling in their nets, time after time. No more mornings sitting on the beach, cleaning stinking piles of fish. No more peddling fillets at the market. Easy street, broad and free of traffic, was laid out before them. And Peter said, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. He handpicked us to be famous. Well, you know as well as I do, that's not exactly how it worked out. Just like all those years ago when Moses went up the mountain, a cloud descended over the top of it, and Yahweh himself wanted to have a word with mortals. Now to Peter and James and John's good fortune, it wasn't 40 days and 40 nights worth of words like it was for Moses, but it was terrifying. And all their grandiose plans fled like roaches from a flashlight beam as they heard a voice address them. This is my beloved son. 
with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It's as if God says, don't listen to your own hearts and minds. Don't listen to the crowds cheering your name, pressing in around you. Don't listen to your plans and schemes for easy street and fame. Don't listen to those immortality projects you've set up by which you hope to make a name for yourself that will outlive you by decades and decades. Listen to him, to Jesus. So let's, let's listen to him every day. His voice is as close as the book. The kids know it. They know where to listen for him. If you've got one where his words are in red letters, all the easier. It's easier to find that way. If they're all the same color, just go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and listen. And don't make the mistake of picking just a few words that fit neatly with any of your plans. Hear them all. Listen to them all. And you know what happens when you do? That word starts to get into you. It starts to find its target. It makes its way to your heart. And once it gets there, it creates faith. It makes you hungry for more. His word carries the power that enables you to grasp it and believe it and to want more of it. For now, listen to him in just a few of his words. And I think maybe the Stick family will appreciate his words today. The Gretzingers, the Westfalls, he says, come to me, all you who are tired, weary, and carrying heavy burdens. I'll give you rest. Put your shoulder to my yoke, he says, and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Listen to him. There is nowhere you can be that is so far gone that he can't find you. He's going to leave the 99. He's going to come looking. And when he finds you, there's going to be rejoicing in heaven. In fact, if you would, grab one of the green hymnals. Turn to hymn number 306. There's a phrase at the end of the second verse of this beautiful hymn that expresses the feeling when you've been found. Love that found me, wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. He's going to find you. And when he does, you'll know you're home. Now, I trust your ability to sing and that you know this hymn well enough. I want to sing verse 5 as a prayer because that's what it is. I'm not going to sing it alone. You're going to sing it with me. Okay? Oh, my Savior, help afford by your spirit and your word when my wayward heart would stray keep me in the narrow way grace in time of need supply while i live Remember, 
remember how we used to end every hymn years ago? Uh, amen. join the saints in confessing the one true faith. Use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts in the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for this day where we gather and hear your word. We pray, Lord, 
that your word would transfigure before us. That today, as we go forth in our life, we would go forth with the hope of knowing that we no longer carry the sins of burdens of this life, for you have paid for them on the cross. And that in our baptism, we are not just washed into your death, but also into your resurrection. Lord God, we thank you for this. And help us to be that light, that fire that shines towards this nation, this, this town, and our friends and family, so that they may too see your glory and know the forgiveness that comes with you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for all who are mourning, needing of your healing hand, for those who have lost loved ones, for the Gretzinger family, the Stick family, and all who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones who have gone. Lord, we thank you for the promise of the resurrection, that though we die, we live in you, and we are greeted when we leave this world with a place of no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, but of resurrection, health, joy, and eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for all who need your healing hand in recovering from surgery and illness. We pray for all who are wrestling with a cold that uh, lingers on. Lord, be with them. Help them to feel better. We also pray for those who continue to uh, recover from injuries. Gloria Anderson, Joan Paulson, Jim Krieger, and all, all who need your healing hand. Those in our hearts and mind, we name to you silently. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for peace in this world that is greatly divided, filled with conflict. We pray for the country of Ukraine. We also pray for the Eastern European Mission Network and all the missionaries who serve in that area. We pray in this time of war and conflict that they may be a light of your peace in this part of the world. We pray that the leaders of the governments would turn to you and that they might find a peaceful resolution to these problems. Lord, in your mercy, help us to go forth with your Holy Spirit, Lord, knowing that you are with us. Give us the joy to know that we can take on whatever may face us, for you are with us. And we thank you for all the blessings you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now collect the morning offering.
please rise. Let us now pray the offertory prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth and for the labors of those who work to provide them. Make us faithful stewards of your great bounty, both for our needs and for the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. You may be seated. Come at the Lord's call and receive his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation.
Please rise. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you in body and soul and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Just a few brief announcements before we conclude this morning. Uh, this Wednesday, of course, begins the season of Lent and our Wednesday worship schedule. It will be as in years past, 12.10 in the afternoon and 6.30 in the evening. Um, with Lent also comes the uh, men's and women's Lenten breakfast. They will start a week from Tuesday next week. Uh, the women will meet at St. Rose Catholic Church starting at 8 a.m. on those Tuesdays, and the men will meet at the Methodist Church at 6.30 a.m. on those Tuesdays. Um, after our late worship service today, um, any of the students interested in being trained as an acolyte will, will meet here with Pastor Ben at uh, 11.30 and he'll take you through the training and uh, you'll be on the list and ready to go as one of our acolytes. Um, for the flowers today, we thank the family of Frances Gretzinger, those up front, her, her funeral was here on, wow, the days kind of added up on me, Friday. Um, and the flowers on the far side over here are from the family of uh, Reuben Westfall, um, Fred's brother. Uh, who passed away this last week as well. And of course, we uh, extend our sympathies also to the Steck family. Um, our dear friend Ione passed away yesterday morning and her funeral will be here Tuesday morning at 11. I believe those are all the announcements I have. Um, I just encourage you to take your parish news with you to stay up to date. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.